Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Founders Interview on Webiquity. Uh, today, I'm joined by Mark Osuna Sen, founder and CEO at Scopa Analytics. Um, hi, Mark. Thanks for joining. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on, Tom. I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm excited to talk to you. Ditto. Uh, uh, we met back in September at a um, yep. beta showcase during a Twin City Startup Week, another great event put on by the folks at, at Beta Minnesota. Um, how was that? Uh, how was that event for you? It was. It was really insightful. That was actually our first official kind of run at a trade show uh, type of experience. So we had our we had our screen set up. I, we could gesture to, <laughs> to some, a loop that we had set up for that had some marketing material as well as kind of like a demo running live. So it was it was a good kind of test run to see you know what what it would look like to kind of move forward with uh, that trade show conference field, but it was super valuable. We met a ton of great people, a lot of nice local businesses around here too. Yeah, they, they, they draw a great crowd for those. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so jumping into it, uh, in a few sentences, kind of tell us what problem or problems that uh, Scope Analytics solves, who it solves them for, and what makes it special, cool. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So. At Scopa, um, our primary product is the Scopa tagging platform, right? And what that does is essentially solves and fixes the limitations of current content marketing strategies, right? So what we do is we enable brands and publishers to link to multiple destinations. Otherwise, brands and publishers are kind of constrained um, to only link to one destination per image. Like traditionally, right, one image can link to one place. We essentially... Um, keep that from affecting your engagement, your revenue, and your analytics. So what we essentially do is we're adapting social media's advancements in UX and CRO, right? Conversion rock optimization and user experience. And we're adapting that so it works with first-party web content. Right. So for example, and I'll show this in the post, but you could have a photo of somebody running and you could have like the, you know, their, their sweatpants tagged with, with one tag, their shoes with another, um, yep. maybe their earbuds with another, right? So you can call out and you can link to several destinations from that within that one photo. Yeah, absolutely. So you got to just right. So whether you're like a publisher looking to have multiple links on an image to maximize your affiliate revenue, or if you're an e-commerce brand that's looking to streamline your customer experience or cross sell a little bit more, um, our tool can help do that. And who are your, who's, uh, who's embracing it so far? B2B versus B2C, big company, small company? Yeah, absolutely. So we're trying to get a couple of case studies right now, 25 to 50 initial case studies here. Um, primarily, you know, publishers and e-commerce um, partners. Um, the partnerships that we've seen kind of most initially have been in the D2C, so direct to consumer space, as well as some B2C retail. Um, those have been the top couple. We are in talks with a couple publishers and blogs, um, you know, some, some magazines here in town, as well as some online ones um, to try to boost their affiliate revenue. But so far, it's been a lot of pretty much D2C, B2C, um, whether that be, you know, magazines or commerce. Um, I think the main, the main pretty much critical factor is do they have or speak to a visual uh, product or hobby. So whether it's a dude hiking and it's, you know, there, there's a lot of gear in the photo or if they're, you know, a fashion or lifestyle publication or if they're, you know, selling suitcases, anything that's visual um, has, has been really beneficial so far. And is it usually like a marketing title kind of person or who's, the, who's your champion within those organizations? Yeah, absolutely. So it depends on the organization. So at let's say at a commerce partner. So looking at a brand selling goods, um, that would be their digital marketing person or their marketing agency. We've actually been partnering with different marketing agencies as well um, who focus on customer experience or maybe SEO um, because there's a lot of backlinking potential here as well with, with tags. So um, it, that's been kind of you know the marketing play. And then on the publisher side, it could be anyone from digital experience to even like the head of revenue or partnerships just looking to make more money. Because frankly, you know, publications like GQ make 20% plus, if you think about who pays for magazines anymore, right? They make 20% or more of their revenue from affiliate partnerships and deals like that. So if we're saying, hey, you know, we could 3X the amount of affiliate links you have on your content without you having to change a thing, 
um, that's a huge value prop for them. So um, it's been, it's been those. Um, how are, how are those folks doing it today if they're doing it at all? Um, yep. And then what, what's different or special about the scope of analytics platform that makes it preferable to what, however they're doing it today? Yeah. So today, right now, I mean, frankly, they are, I mean, if you think about when you go on a website, right, you, you go on a website and you scroll to an article, I mean, um, and it's just a static image, right? It links to one place. What we're able to do in terms of multi-linking, the only multi-linking options that that would essentially be alternatives to our platform are either in the education space a little bit more or they're made custom. So for example, Ikea, right? They have a huge developer team. They have a ton of money. Um, they've been able to invest and develop their own product tagging platform for their content, but they have to pay to support it. And ours is a nice, easy plug and play feature that actually has more robust analytics um, built in. So we're trying to be essentially that plug and play universal solution for businesses. I think that analytics piece is key, right? Versus trying to do something like um, an image map. Oh, absolutely. So what this is doing is it's kind of come the analytics piece essentially combines the best parts of a heat map, if you will, right? You can see where users are hovering, where they're clicking, where they're getting the most interaction and their eyes are going. And it's applying that in a product specific way. So you can actually attribute that data to specific products. You're saying, oh, all our walnut furniture is getting a ton of hovers, but our maple furniture has way higher click-through rates. Maybe we need more content prioritizing that kind of content right, or that kind of product, I should say. So those performance optimizations are really only vis like visible and apparent to those who can kind of track and attribute that to products or conversions. Got it. Um, just as a, as a bit of background, a few quick sure. things about the company. So you're founded. Yep, uh, 2021. So we were founded officially um, in February, but we've been working on the platform for about two years. Okay. Um, funding rounds, are you self-funded? Any, any rounds that you have raised you want to talk about? Yeah, um, so right now we are bootstrapped. Um, so we are completely self-funded. Um, both me and my co-founder, Pablo, super talented CTO, um, we have been bootstrapping it, but we do see some growth in the near future in terms of raising. And um, anything you're willing to say about current size, number of employees, number of customers, anything that you're, you're okay with sharing? Yeah. So like I said, right now, you know, we do have a few, and let me plug in here because I am running a little bit low on battery, but um, we essentially have our first couple of customers right now, both in the commerce and the publisher space, but we are looking to get to our first 25 to 50. So we're targeting that for the next quarter. And once we have that amount of traction and we can use their data um, for case studies, really, um, then that's when we're really hoping to take off and have some funding and really just have our case rock solid. Right now, we're seeing really great early results. We're seeing, you know, those the content that has scope of tags on it is driving users with higher order values on average. So they're cross-selling a little bit more effectively. Uh, we're also seeing some nice analytics data and performance optimizations being used. So really promising early stuff, but yeah, we want to get those first 25 to 50 right now. We're a team of about, we're two full-timers. So us co-founders are doing it full-time. And then we have a couple of contractors as well. Gotcha. So what inspired you to work on a solution to like this particular problem? Great question. <laughs> so uh, love it or hate it. So I, I'm an avid GQ fan. I'm a fanatic there. Um, so I was actually reading a GQ article um, back in, you know, peak pandemic season, right? It was like March or April um, 2020. And I was spending way too much screen time. And what I was doing was, you know, looking at this article that GQ has every week that says, hey, top 10 biggest fits of the week. They essentially analyze paparazzi shots and outfits and on occasion you know they'll link out or mention their partners right they're like oh yeah these nikes are really on trend you can get them here at nike.com or something and there was a specific outfit that i was i was looking at. i forgot who was wearing it but i was interested in for example like his hoodie or his sweater um and they were talking about the person's shoes so 
I was like, why don't they, because on Instagram, they tag all the brands that they feature, right? They tag every single brand, they get that exposure. Um, why don't they do that online? They, you know, they're limiting themselves. And then it kind of clicked that there is no plug and play solution only tagging only really exists right now in, in a customer experience sense on Pinterest, Instagram, and Amazon for the most part. So um, some other platforms like House, for example, have, have done it as well, but there's no plug and play solution for first party content. So that's what led us to essentially get this going. Excellent. So as you're just kind of rolling this out now, as you mentioned, you're very sure. early in, in, in picking up customers. How are you, um, how are you getting the word out there about the product and, and what's, what seems to be working as far as, as bringing some attention uh, to your product? Great question. So I actually have most of my professional experience in the digital marketing space. So I've worked at a couple of different agencies. Um, so it's been a lot of LinkedIn and then leveraging those connections as well. Um, talking to different marketing agencies, seeing, you know, what clients of theirs could utilize the, their product and maybe help them drive more conversions or, um, or just see if there's any connections there. So recently it's been a lot of email, LinkedIn and word of mouth. Gotcha. Um, finish the sentence, if you would, uh, knowing sure. what I know now, if I were starting over today, which hasn't been that long, but, uh, uh, what I yeah. would do differently is what? I jokingly almost, I, I'd say um, start networking a little bit earlier. I, I think, I think we're doing a great job phenomenal. You know, we're doing really well right now, but um, just knowing some of, you know, how tight some circles are, uh, it, we're still breaking in our way to, for example, like the affiliate networking space. Um, there's these massive affiliate networks that we're really trying to get a partnership with. And, um, and I think that networking is going to be really valuable there, so. Excellent. Uh, and kind of feeding off of that, so what is the, what's kind of the most important advice you could offer to a, a would-be entrepreneur, somebody who's just starting out today, um, wanting to found their own company? That's, that's a really good one. And honestly, this is something I think we did really well. Uh, we, we went to pretty much every person we could <laughs> and, we're like, Hey, poke holes in this. What do you, what do you think about this? And give us like Simon Cowell. That's aging myself a little bit. He hasn't been on shows <laughs> for a while, but give us the most brutal feedback you can, you know, poke as many holes as you can in this. And in the end, honestly, like it, it led us to developing a really easy to use low maintenance uh, platform that, that I'm really proud of. You know, we, we developed it in a year. Um, Pablo leading the CTO, you know, as CTO, leading the tech side, crushing it, right? They delivered that a really immaculate product that's super easy to use within a year. So it's all I could ask for. And right now, you know, just getting that, using that feedback as we move forward is, has been really beneficial. So I'd say get those holes poked as early as you can. <laughs> Excellent. Um, anything I didn't ask that you'd like to add? Um, I, nothing, nothing major. I would just say if there are any um, digital marketing or, you know, SEO agencies or affiliate marketing agencies that are looking for ways that they can essentially two to three X the amount of affiliate revenue um, that their clients are bringing in or and take a piece of that pie, maybe on the, uh, on the agency side. Um, yeah. Feel free to reach out to us. We're scopaanalytics.com. So. I, what you, you, you jumped on my final question, <laughs> which is just how do, uh, how do people connect with you and, uh, oh, sure, and, sure. and, and find out more about, uh, about scope analytics? Yeah. Well, um, in addition to our website, scopeanalytics.com, uh, we are really active on LinkedIn. Uh, we were actually just featured on uh, performance marketing world. Uh, we had an, a feature in there for product tech marketing. So really excited. Um, we're really active. We're trying to be thought leaders and kind of mounting and establishing that, uh, product tech marketing sector of the digital marketing space. So really active on there. I, I saw that. Guy. That was a really nice article. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really proud of it. And it was awesome of them to feature us. Nice job. Well, thanks, Mark, for uh, uh, joining me today. And uh, this has been a great discussion. I really enjoyed it. Have a, have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Tom. You too. Appreciate you.